I'm going to teach you what foods are safe to feed to your bearded dragon. Bearded dragons are omnivores and can eat a variety of foods, but mainly green vegetation and insects. Luckily, nowadays, many different types of insects are bred as feeders. We are going to categorize this by staple feeders and those occasional ones that you're going to mix in. The roaches are wildly popular and very easy to breed. The most famous type of cockroach is the dubia roach. Now that's very, very common across the world. These are also illegal in some states. So if you can't get these, you're going to have to look at some of the other roach species. We've got red runner roaches. Now these are also called Turkestan red runner roaches, but these are great for baby bearded dragons. They come in a smaller size and they're very fast and flighty they behave much like the american cockroach so for some of you that might be a big no-no and you've got some options here still we've got discoid roaches now discoid roaches are legal in a lot of states which means they can be a good alternative if you can't get some of these other roach species we've got lobster roaches orange head roaches green banana roaches death headed roaches a huge variety of roaches here the green banana ones some people actually just keep as pets because they're wildly wildly pretty they're a bright irradiant green color most of these cockroach species are very high in protein and can be very good for a growing animal that being said i have listed these as staple but don't go overboard some people slip into a routine where they're just feeding the same thing over and over again and if you feed a diet that's excessively high in protein it can lead to gout in bearded dragons as long as you're feeding a well varied diet and cycling through the other staples you should be fine we've got phoenix worms or otherwise called calci worms here in the uk now these are incredibly high in calcium it's even been said that you don't even need to dust these with calcium powders. We also have silkworms, which are the larval form of the silk moth, famously used to make silk products in China. Now, these are incredibly low in fat and are good in other nutrients. Some people describe them as the perfect feeder, and I don't believe in such thing because I believe in a varied diet, but they are a very good thing to include as a staple part of your bearded dragon's diet. Next, we've got crickets. Now, crickets are an incredibly good feeder. The black cricket, we've got the silent cricket, the house cricket, or sometimes called banded cricket. These are all sources of protein. They have most of the essential amino acids, a good spread there. They are lacking in vitamin A, E, D, and calcium. Luckily, vitamin E and A can be boosted in these animals by feeding them a high carotenoid and high vitamin E diet. Now, you might look at crickets and say they're all the same, certainly isn't the case. There was a study that looked at how different cricket species accrued carotenoids in gut loading formulas over time and the species of cricket plays a role in how good they are at accruing different amounts of different nutrients. So it's really important even on this little detail to even mix and match different species of cricket because the nutrition varies between them too. Next we have locusts, they're very popular in Europe and the UK. They are very lean, good source of protein. They are very active and will climb. They're very good for arboreal species and when a bit of dragon is set up high. I believe these are probably illegal in the states or at least in most states because of agricultural laws and the probability of these becoming a pest for agriculture. So if these aren't available to you then you've still got a lot of other staples on this list. Another good feeder is isopods. Now isopods are commonly kept as pets and bioactive cleanup crew as well and they have a very high calcium exoskeleton because of that shell now it's debatable how much of that calcium is available and how much of it is just tied up in that shell that's going to be pooped out by a dragon anyway but nonetheless they move fast and they're great for your bearded dragon to hunt so let's talk about some of the occasional feeders now we've got wax worms which are the larval form of the wax moth now these are incredibly high in fat which is why they're an occasional thing to include in it does doesn't mean that high in fat is bad it just means you need to have an actual target goal in mind as to why you're using it let's say you've got an underweight dragon then maybe you move that across into staple because you're trying to get more fat into the diet to get that dragon to gain weight but if you have an adult dragon that's just looking to maintain weight you want to make sure that that wax worm is an occasional treat because you don't want to include too much fat in the staple diet Next, we've got mealworms. Now, mealworms are incredibly famous, have been used for years because they're so easy to breed. Now, they have really hard exoskeletons compared to the ratio of that to their actual inner bodies. So they're really high in phosphorus because phosphorus is tied up in their exoskeleton. They can also be difficult to dust with calcium powders just because of that body shape and how easily some of that powder can just fall off. We've got superworms, which are a similar looking insect to the mealworm. Both of these are larval forms of beetles. Now, superworms are 
are very high in fat, just like waxworms. Again, just like mealworms, they're really high in phosphorus. So superworms are really good for gaining weight, but if you're looking to maintain weight, it's an occasional feeder like the rest. Next, we have hornworms. Bearded dragons go mad for hornworms, but they have a really high water content, and it's been reported many times that this can cause loose stool in bearded dragons. So many recommend they should probably be an occasional feeder. And then we have butterworms. Now butterworms are a larval form yet again, and they're high in fat, making them an occasional treat. The sheer variety nowadays is amazing. You should mix and match as much as possible to give your bearded dragon a well-balanced diet. Different insects are good for different nutrients, and one's pros might make up for the shortfalls of another's cons. So by cycling through them, you're covering your basis and making sure that the diet of your bearded dragon is as nutritionally diverse as possible. Bearded dragons need twice as much calcium in their diet as phosphorus to avoid diseases like metabolic bone disease. Insects do not have a skeleton and therefore don't have the means to store calcium. They have an exoskeleton and that is mainly phosphorus. So what we need to do is dust our bugs with calcium powders to make up for that. Now most of these insects can be bought in pet stores or they can be purchased online and shipped right to your door. Online stores like rainbowmealworms.net sell nearly all of these feeders I've mentioned today. Just check what's legal in your state on their website. There are just as many greens that you can feed to your bearded dragon, just don't feed fruit. The high sugar content in fruit can cause tooth decay in bearded dragons, and bearded dragons don't have sets of teeth, they have one serrated jawbone. And when they get cavities, that can bore a hole into that bone, and the jaw's basically gone. The fruits themselves can actually cause a lot of bloating in the stomach as well. They wouldn't find them in the wild, so it's not natural to be in their diet, and we're paying more to cause them problems, so just don't give them fruit. Here are some of the many supermarket and wild weeds that you can feed to your bearded dragons. Again, we are categorizing our greens into staple and occasional, and then separating that further between supermarket and weeds. Globe artichoke is a great staple feed. Arugula or rocket in the UK is a great one to include as a staple feed. Mustard greens, cilantro, collard greens, lamb's lettuce, sage, watercress, a puntia cactus pads. It's also called the prickly pear cactus and it's actually invasive in Australia. So bitter dragons have the possibility to come across these cactus pads in the wild too. And finally, dill. In the occasional section, we've got things like kale. Now kale in the past got a bad rep because people thought it was really high in oxalates, but actually it's got less oxalates than something like dandelion greens, which people absolutely love to use. Both of those are really high in calcium. The fear there is that a high oxalate content can interfere with calcium absorption, but actually the high calcium content of kale kind of neutralizes that. We've also got bok choy. Now, bearded dragons really like bok choy. It is kind of high on goitrogens, but that being said, as an occasional green that is mixed in, it shouldn't be a problem. We've also got spring greens, turnip greens, alfalfa hay. Now alfalfa hay is really good at adding fiber to the stomach content of a dragon, especially if they're having a bout of diarrhea. Alfalfa hay can add that bulk and really help with soaking that up. It also replicates the dry arid vegetation that a bearded dragon might come across in the wild. You've also got romaine lettuce, iceberg lettuce and peeled cucumber. Now these last three a lot of people say to never feed because nutritionally they are very low but they are very good water content so the reason I say they're actually okay to feed occasionally if your goal is to hydrate a bearded dragon. It's perfectly acceptable to use these to add bulk to a bowl of food for a dragon and their main purpose is to deliver water. People forget that water itself is a nutrient as well. The issue arises when people feed a solely monoculture diet of these types of vegetation where they're feeding low nutrient water based items and nutritionally their bearded dragon suffers over time and stories like that give it a bad rep. But if you know what you're doing and you have a target goal in mind, it is perfectly acceptable in my eyes. Let's move over to weed. You've got things like dead nettle, horse parsley, sow thistle. I use sow thistle a lot. It grows readily in my garden. Thankfully, even if it's raining, I can open the back door, grab some and go up to the bearded dragon. You've got bristly ox tongue, cat's ear. Again, I've got a lot of cat's ear in my garden, which is great. Creeping thistle, harebell, hawk's beard, hawk bit, 
hedge woundwort, broadleaf plantain, stag's horn plantain, narrowleaf plantain, cotton thistle, spear thistle. What I will say is that a lot of these are UK plants because that's my experience and knowledge mostly, but a lot of these do also occur in the US or have a similar related cousin in the US that is applicable. In the occasional section, we have clover and dandelion greens. Now, dandelion greens I've put there because of the high oxalate content, but as a occasional thing mixed in in a balanced diet, it's perfectly fine. A great way to check what a weed is when you're out and about is to use an ID app. I use an app called Picture This on iOS. I take a picture of the weed, it scans it, the AI tells me what it thinks that weed is. Then I use another app called the Tortoise Table to identify whether it's safe to feed the tortoises. Generally, if it's safe for tortoises, it can be presumed that it's safe for bearded dragons. If you're going to be collecting safe weeds from outside, Check what's going on with the area. See if there's pesticides. See if you're on like agricultural farmland. And of course, wash things off before you feed. Make sure you're feeding a very diverse diet of these different plants. It's just as important as the bugs. Different micro and macronutrient profiles, again, make up for the shortfalls of other plants. So variety is key. Luckily, lots of our greens are really high in calcium. So we don't actually need to dust them. You can leave that dusting to the bugs. And then once a fortnight, you can dust with a multivitamin and you're sorted. But to find out how much to feed and how often to feed, you're going to have to watch this video right here.